Hello YouTube, it's Dos Gregor. And as promised, here is a Linux review. This review is going to be on Sparky Linux. And Sparky Linux is designed and comes from Poland. Yes, that's right, it's a Polish distribution. Now you may wonder why I always, well, I try to always say the country of origin. And that's mainly because I think it's pretty cool how with Linux there are so many different flavors out there and that each one has just a little bit of something special from the country they came from. Uh, Calculate, for instance, was from Russia, very good uh, distribution, and unfortunately <laughs> that's the only one that comes to mind, although I know there's some from Greece, Ireland, Canada. Um, I did try to do a Japanese flavor at one time, but it was all in their own handwriting, or not handwriting, but their script. And if you ever watch my Ututo, which is from South America, which was all in Spanish, if you think trying to figure out stuff when you don't speak the language is bad, try figuring out when you can't even make heads or tails of what the symbols mean. <laughs> anyway. This is Sparky Linux. It comes from Poland, as I said. It's a Debian-based distribution, lightweight. Uh, it is based off of the, um, oh, what does it say here? It's it's not the stable tree. It's it's the, uh, I don't want to say it's unstable, testing branch. There we go. Based off the testing branch. It's considered a rolling release, which means that as updates become available, you're able to download and install them. I like a rolling release over a set version number because when you wait for a long period of time and then all of a sudden you get that new version and it comes out, there's a massive update and it always seems to break my system. And I'm sure it happens to a lot of you where you wait for a long period of time, you go and update, you know, 100, 200 packages gets updated, you reboot and you get a blinking caps lock where you got a flashing kernel panic or something happens and you're unable to boot into your new system. Quite frustrating. And when it's a bin type distro, where to begin, you never know. It's almost easier just to go ahead and start over and go that route. Well, as you can see from my background, I'm still on the road this week. Still in Utah. I'll be heading back south here tomorrow, but I wanted to make sure that I had everything kind of set up for you prior so that when I get back to a little bit better internet connection, I'll be able to upload this much better for you. One thing I have noticed sitting here and being a little bit closer to the camera, I got a lot more gray in my beard than I thought I did, but I do notice that I'm starting to get back my handlebars on both sides. so. If all goes well, maybe this uh, winter I'll trim down the beard a little bit, let the handlebars grow out, and see how they look, see how they turn out. I mean, if, if I can't grow hair on top of my head because it's pretty thin up here, I might as well at least try to grow out where I can with the handlebars, right? <laughs> it all fell down southward, you know what I mean, as I got older. Enough about me. This particular flavor of Linux with Sparky um, is open box so it's very lightweight, but they have different versions. In fact, I was kind of thinking afterwards, about midway through, I kind of wish I would have put on a different flavor of it on there, because while Openbox is nice, I don't like how it handles the menu system, and I'd forgotten that about the last time that I had did a distribution review using Openbox. But it's kind of strange. With, with Sparky, they try to do a dynamic update of the menu. For instance, when I installed GUVC View, it went ahead and added it to the menu. It's a right click and then if we go for instance to applications and down into sound and video you'll see that down at the bottom here it did add GVC view. But when I installed Simple Screen Recorder for instance it uh, didn't put it anywhere and instead of messing around with installing, because in the last time I did find a way to put it in, which is, isn't too difficult. I mean you just have to go into the config area and then go into the open box menu editor and change the editor there. 
Now it is, they make it as easy as you can for the configurations with an open box right here with the configuration. You can see that the Conkey editor will help you edit this little widget over here, the W bar editor for over here for down on all your quick launch applications, and then of course your menu editor and a few other things. Now it's interesting that when you go into the open box menu, I was going to start trying to do this and then in the other version I could click on this and I could write you know go on down and fix stuff but this is actually piping a menu and it's going into a different location and and for instance here piping a menu user bin mArch um, open box menu and then it's momdemon.py.show and I just decided yeah not worth going through all that headache. I can, I can do a start application and just type it in manually. I don't really need an, a menu and a menu item for that. This comes very basic. There isn't much. I mean, your your only word processor is the um, some sort of a word type editor, which bugger me, I swear. Mine goes blank. When you go to Office, you see Abby Word. There you go. You got numeric for uh, your Excel type stuff and then your calendar and global time and so forth. But everything is very, very minimal. It might only have the QD4 because I needed it for installing the simple screen recorder. It did come with a few games. It did come with GIMP and uh, webcam software. But very, very minimal. Not very much there. But that's great for someone who's looking for something lightweight maybe wants to be on the cutting edge and have a little bit newer uh, version of certain applications to go with the testing branch instead of the stable although I'll tell you, I'll be honest the uh, versions of Debian that I have tested so far with Wheezy have been spot on perfect you know no bugs, no complaints versions might not be the newest but darn fun and good to use no big issues at all I found Sparky Linux because I didn't have any buddy who had request anything new at the time and I was also looking for something lightweight that as you know since I'm out in Utah right now I wanted to be able to install something that would be quick and simple and wouldn't take up too much space and I could get over a slower internet connection because it is very slow and you get spoiled when you're at home and you're getting anywhere from five to eight megabytes per second on your download and if you convert that into what the the lingo that they use that's roughly anywhere from 40 to 64 megabits per second on your download you, you can download a 1.4 gig image file like this yeah, 10 minutes 15 minutes you can download a 700 meg ISO in about 5 minutes you get so spoiled with that. I remember back 20 years ago or so when my wife and I would just be trying to download an mp3 that was anywhere from 3 to 5 megs on an old 33.6 modem or, or 56k modem and we'd sit there for 10 minutes waiting for that thing to download and ah, nowadays it downloads so fast you blink and it's like it's done? Are you sure? Did we get it? Is it corrupted? Is it not? I can't be but it is and it's wonderful and I'll never complain about the speeds that I have at home now <laughs> a little uh, spoiled I'll say but anyway like I was saying in the download section for Sparky here we go into it and you'll see that you can get the um, I'm sorry the LXDE version this is the version I'm using here OpenBox and JWM you can get the Enlighten version, the Mate version, which I'm almost, I, I wish I would have tried out Mate just to see how it was, but I was also curious maybe about the, the Razer QT, you know, just to see how that might be. You can even get a command line interface version of it, which is quite interesting, I've never seen it, and I'm not sure what this Game Over Edition is, I didn't really look too much into it, I wonder if that's more towards lightweight gaming, or if it's just the theme, I'm not sure. But they have a good community here. I was able, for instance, when finding some problems, that I was able to easily go into their forums and look for information and be able to get uh, a few things fixed up and running. And you know, trying to figure out, for instance, about how Conky works here, or the W bar, that sort of thing. They have very good forums, very good uh, information out there. And they have some cool artwork 
that's that's here that you can go into and some really cool themes I found all kinds of neat stuff that you can do with the conky bar over here and setting it up it did come only with default CPU 0 and 1 so I had to do some editing to it to add all of my CPU processes so I could get that running the one thing you'll always have to remember when if you use open boxes there's a lot of configuring that you have to do manually a lot of text editor type stuff that you're gonna have to get into to update but as you saw in the download section you don't have to go with open box you can go with something like mate or another flavor the GUI that does more of the work for you so that you can do less of that and more just playing as for multimedia out of the box it seems to run really well with the mp3 mp4s uh, if you go into YouTube YouTube plays very well and it is set up so that you have to click on it first to activate it which is kinda nice in a low bandwidth environment so that it's just not automatically just grabbing bandwidth and starting to play everything that's there plus I kinda like that too when you have this flash that's out there that you go to a website and suddenly it's plain junk it's like oh, I didn't click on anything what are you doing so yeah it's very nice that oh yeah they don't, don't have to click on that don't want that to play and it doesn't just automatically go ahead and do it nice feature it's been pretty stable I've been using it uh, since I got here at the beginning of this week I downloaded it actually while I was here and that's why I decided I'm not gonna upload this video until after I get home tomorrow night I'm doing this a little bit earlier than usual I know we try to do all this stuff on the Friday evening Friday afternoon time frame after work you know after I've been testing it for a long week uh, but since I have an 11 hour drive to get home tomorrow I don't want to get home and then have to sit there and say okay let's do this review we're gonna talk about Sparky Linux and oh I'm tired because <laughs> that's what I'd feel like it'd be like that time when I did that review a couple days ago Gen 2 and review I was exhausted I'd been working all oh, so hard that day I had so much to do here and so little time to do it out here in Utah. Yeah, but it, yeah, going back to the to Sparky, it's it's been good, strong. Even though it's based on on the on the testing branch, it's it's been easy to use. It was not difficult to use Synaptics to get the packages and a few packages that I needed that it didn't have. It wasn't that difficult to find out how to get them installed and run. Um, out of the box it did come with some basic C programming so I didn't have to grab some of the development programs that sometimes you have to do in a Debian or bin based flavor I did have to install QT manually so I could get some of that running for the simple screen recorder and that always seems to be a, a pain for me when I go to install simple screen recorder in some distributions I'm not always sure which QT4 development packages I need to download and install and one of these days I just gotta sit down and try something and try the next and try the next until I find the right combination so I can just record it document it and then I don't have to keep doing the whole oh what did I do last time thing to find it um, gee it's been a long week <laughs> even if I don't even if I haven't uh, had to drive too much. Today I only had to drive about 125 miles, so that's not too bad. And to go to some different uh, sites and check out their computer equipment and so forth. But uh, Sparky Linux is another fun flavor, lightweight. I do have um, a request for next week, but if anybody wants me to look at a distribution, uh, no matter what it is, even if it's got GNOME on it, even if it's Ubuntu based, I'll look at it. I'll give my two cents and I'll ramble about something else for a while if you don't mind all that. I don't mind at all. I enjoy it. I like it when people uh, give me ideas of what they'd like to see. You know, I do have a couple more Gen 2 and reviews before I dive into how to install Gen 2 and uh, the tutorial I've been thinking about trying to do. I want it to be more than just watch my screen and copy what I'm doing. I want to discuss a little bit about each chapter and the options that they're giving you and hopefully that hopefully that'll be a good thing for you guys and I'll eventually of course do a 
a Gen 2 maybe in a virtual box so I can do recording while I do it because I don't know how else to do that and without a camcorder maybe sitting on my shoulder so that you can kind of see what I'm seeing and then I don't know how good that would be either so I may have to do the install in, in a virtual box but for the most part it's pretty much the same to get going and then we can kind of expand from there so as I always say if it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having enjoy it thank you for watching this distribution review on Sparky Linux until my next video Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you very much for all the birthday wishes from last week. Everything went well. Had a great time with my family uh, for my birthday. This is the last year I have to be in my 30s. Next year it's the big 4-0. You'd think from all the gray in my beard that that, way, that ship might have sailed a long time ago, but I got at least one more year in my 30s till till that's all over. So enjoy. Thank you. And again. Keep those comments coming, keep those uh, suggestions coming, and I will keep pouring forth uh, information that hopefully you guys enjoy watching. Until next time, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye.